Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome back to Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. As today, we continue exploring the content for The Last Sarkorian. Though, apparently, it turns out that Ulbrig may be far from The Last Sarkorian. Well, perhaps the last original Sarkorian, but we've got a whole village of their descendants here. Let's do some poking around, shall we? We should burn the bodies, just in case. Who knows how many times these abominations can get up. That is a very pragmatic view. Though, uh, given how resistant they were to your alchemist fire, I'm going to guess burning the bodies won't really accomplish much. Oh, we should, uh, we should go check out that... Ooh, Potion of Greater Heroism, I'll take that. Uh, but yeah, we should we should go check out the devoured horse we came by on the way in. Maybe there was a clue or something back there. Now that we know these things are obviously not not part of their Gundronian culture. We've also got that very obvious blocked bridge. That's gotta be something too. Uh quick side note. Swarmbane clasps are currently on Ulbrig and Regil. Things are pretty durable. You are nothing before me. Right, right. We are going to need more clasps. Retreat is not an option. There we go. Thank you, Ragile. Hmm. What's this? Examining the carcass after the battle makes it clear that the horse was not plagued at all. It looks very strange, though, as if it had perished long ago, and some kind of parasite took over its dead body. Oh, interesting. They've added examination markers for... enemies who just killed. That's... that's fun. I feel like that's something they've never done before. Though, yeah, yeah, this was just meant as, like, a warning of things to come before you reach the front gate. We just kind of skated by it at the time. I'll bet we could have brought it up if we had killed it before we met uh, Yasena and Sigborn. Alright, let's get a gander at Gundren. According to the map, this place is huge. Though I suppose, aside from just generally poking around and looking for clues, we should, uh... We should probably find Yasena. She obviously has more to tell us, we just have to track her down. Oh. Halt, I say! There's a quarantine! The crossing's closed! Uh, sorry, Sigborn, sorry. The sun's in my eyes. Didn't recognize you there. Go right ahead! Uh, are you talking to me? Because I'm not Sigborn. Are you talking to Ulbrig? Does he look like Sigborn? Or maybe Sigborn was supposed to be walking by, but it didn't trigger. That's far enough. The burly fellow standing in front of the bridge is unhurriedly peeling an apple. He glances at you, barely bothering to take a break from his task. I've told you a hundred times, there's a quarantine. Stay on your side with the rest of the afflicted. The healer will arrive soon. Chieftain's orders. Wait. 
So am I on the quarantine side or is the other side quarantined? Which side is Ysena on? I mean, Sigborn, wait. Uh, you have uh, given me momentary pause, my friend. Hands, you mean? What do you want about? I don't have pause. Hang on. The guard stares at his hands. Look at my big paws. They're like a bear's. Wait, am I a bear? It sure looks like it, but bears don't guard bridges. The guard lets out a deep roar and runs away from the bridge. Yeah, th that's, that's probably fine. So, are we on the quarantine side? Because, I mean, I guess that would make sense. The demons were just attacking the gate on this side. But if that's the case, then why can't Yasena get here? She clearly was just here. How long are we supposed to watch over these stiffs? Tell me about it. I wish they'd hurry up and cart them away already. What's taking so long? Hey, you. Yeah, you. There's nothing to see here. Move along. Okay, well, I guess that answers that. We are on the quarantine side. Hmm. They're speechless. Yeah, we are we are seeing some some release jank here. I guess that's not surprising. Pretty low key, really, compared to some of the stuff we saw back in early Kingmaker and Wrath. And Yasena's right here, which does make her request to get to the quarantine side of the bridge a little silly. The idol dedicated to the tribe's ancestors stares down at you in harsh benevolence, radiating tranquility and sanctity. As long as it stands here, the townsfolk need not fear the corruption of the abyss. Hmm, that's interesting. Yasena offers you a friendly nod. You chose an auspicious hour to appear on our doorstep. Wolf's home welcomes its guests. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, hey, why'd you really call me here? How could I not? She cocks her head to one side and gives you a friendly and open smile. You are all that fills Serena's visions these days. The visions come to me one after another, and in each one I see you and the one who walks beside you. What, you mean Ulbrig? The guy who's being very uncharacteristically quiet right now? Okay, well, who uh, who's Serena? Remember how I said you already knew her? I spoke no word of a lie. The white wolf that brought you here, that was Serena. The great wolf of Sarkaris. Serena the swift pod, Serena the sharp-eyed. She gazes somewhere over your shoulder, a slight smile playing on her lips. Her fur is whiter than the coldest glacier. She breathes in time and breathes out eternity. Those were the words my grandmother first used to describe her. Yasena laughs before taking on a more serious tone. Serena is the last goddess of Sarkaris. Her keen gaze brushes over Albrig. A bit hyperbolic, I mean, Palura is still around. So what did you really need help with? It clearly wasn't getting to the quarantine zone. Do you wish to help us? I knew your arrival was a good omen. I had doubts at first, for Serena's visions are not always clear. I wondered if you would be a great boon or a great misfortune. And even though only time will reveal the truth, I will have faith that our future is bright. Gunjan's troubles are many, you know. We are few in number. It is difficult for us to defend our home and gather food. But for as long as Serena watches over us and we remember and honor her, all will be well. The Great Wolf will show us the right path. 
How could it be any other way? And yet, there is one thing that has long since given me cause to worry. Serena's shrine in the sacred grove. Once, long, long ago, yes, just like in the tales, a genuine smile brightens her face and makes it look very young. Long, long ago, the grove was a place of safety, and people were free to enter the shrine. Can you imagine? Shamans of ages past could see Serena with their own eyes, speak with her just like we're speaking right now, not through obscure images and visions. Oh, how I wish I could return Gundren to those days. Yasena sighs, but her sadness is brief. She shakes her mane of thick hair and smiles at you. Who can say? Perhaps you've come here to change everything. Yeah, maybe. So uh, what's your deal? Tell me about yourself. Yasena straightens her shoulders and back. What can I tell you? I am a shaman, the spiritual leader of our town. A gentle and wise mother who listens to anyone who comes to her with their woes. I keep the traditions of old Sarkaris, listen to Serena's will, and pass it on to the people. But if you ask Sigborn about me, you will hear that I am a petulant little girl with a head full of old tales. Her soft laughter fills the air. It may be so. I will show that stubborn fool how real old tales can be. How did you become shaman? Sigborn really seems eager to leave the old ways behind. I'm delighted you asked. It is my favorite story. Every Sarkorian tribe must have a shaman who welcomes the newborn, bids farewell to the departed, gathers the people for celebrations, and communes with the gods. Such is the way of things. But Gundren, Gundren hasn't had a shaman for a whole generation. The people thought the goddess had abandoned us, but they themselves had long forgotten how to worship her. The sacred grove had filled with wicked things, and it had been many generations since anyone had entered the shrine. I was a little tot, must have been no older than five, when my grandma let me out of her sight, and I ended up in the sacred grove. Everyone knew that place meant certain death, and yet I reached the very doors of the shrine and came back and not a hair on my head had been harmed. The look in her amber eyes is triumphant. Serena kept me safe on my journey. I remember her white, fluffy tail. I kept seeing glimpses of it ahead of me. And I remember the smell. The smell of apples in fall. You know, those big red ones, the ones that only turn sweet after the first frost hits? After that, Serena began sending me visions, and... Eventually, I took up the vacant post of shaman here in Gundren. Yasena sighs. I remember it like it was yesterday, the warm, rough surface of the shrine's door under my fingers. I wish I could touch it just one more time. Wait, so you just became shaman one day? You didn't have ancestors who were shamans? I... honestly, I don't know. She looks perplexed, which is a rare expression for her. I think I do. Would the goddess have spoken to anyone else? I'm sure the blood of Sarkorian shamans flows in me. That seems very peculiar. So, uh, so who taught you all this stuff, then? Where'd it come from? One can learn much by paying attention to the words of elders and reading the right books. When I was little, I learned all the Sarkorian tales by heart about the Griffin Brother, the Bear People, the Black Mage. It was so enthralling. And when I grew up, Grandmother gave me the books she had inherited from her grandmother. What are your thoughts on Sigborn? Also, what's the, is he like your brother? What, what's the deal there? It's obvious we don't get along too well, isn't it? She looks away. Whenever I see him coming along the road, I already know the two of us are going to fight like cat and dog. I just can't stand it. Every part of me rebels against his disregard for our traditions. Mages, Numerian technology. He drags anything and anyone into his so-called clan without a second thought. All that matters is that it works. Ancestral experience be damned. What he doesn't understand is that the body must be one with the soul. You cannot give up on your heart to save your body and remain yourself. 
Why, just look at the hunger that moves. It looks all right. The shell is alive. But peer inside, and you will see a terrifying void. Uh-huh. So those, uh, those things at the gate, any idea what those were? Where they came from? Why they're here? It is true. Demons at our very gates. Serena sends me visions of a dark, coiling evil creeping its way to the town. But I can never discern its source. We must search the surrounding lands and learn where the hunger that moves came from. Right, yep, yeah, I was going to do that anyway. I don't suppose you have any idea where I should start? Her face becomes pensive, as if she is trying to summon images from memory. Darkness. Thick, rustling darkness. The smell of dirt, moisture, and stone dust. And splashing water, waves, crashing one by one against the shore. That is what Serena is telling me, and Serena is never wrong. Look for a place that resembles this vision, and may the Great Wolf's blessing be with you. Right, thanks, that helps. Water and dirt. Gotcha. Hey, uh, I don't suppose you or Serena know what this weird rock is? Oh, may I hold it for a moment? I've never seen one before, but I've heard a lot about them. The shaman takes the stone in her hands with great care. It's so ancient, and yet it still holds power. They use charms like these to honor the forest spirits. Spirits are like little godlings. They're so weak, but they're still useful. The sacred grove still has a few altars standing. You can try your luck. Perhaps your charm will awaken one of them. Okay, thanks. That's uh, that's actually useful. All right, Yusena, I'll see you around. May the great wolf bless your every step in these lands. Yeah, you too. I guess we're just done with the quarantine thing. I mean, we got a lot of useful info there, but it does feel like it has a very big disconnect between some of the things they're telling us and some of what actually happens. We never got a tour. The whole quarantine thing was just nothing. And Albrecht has not chimed in even once since we got here, which is very weird. Like, this is his quest. You'd think he'd be a lot more talkative, especially after... After all that jazz about how he was trying to find his lost people. Also, Yusena mentioned it was Serena that brought us here, but it was actually Ervar. I mean, yeah, we saw Serena a few times back in the other village, but when the portal opened, that was definitely Ervar. He was a giant golden griffin. I'm not drunk. You're drunk. What do you want? Nope, there's not enough for three. Fair enough. Broken bridge leading up to an elevated area. Other side of the secondary bridge with its strangely silent guardsmen. So I guess we should go track down Sigborn. You there. Yes, you, my friend. Come over here. Greetings. I'm the owner of this tavern. I heard you saved many of our people at the gates. You have my thanks. For that, whatever you want here. It's on the house. Oh, uh, thank you. This is where we rest. Okay. Well, that's handy. Especially since we know this is a safe zone. Assuming we're not in another winter sun situation here. Troubled Merchant. Are you the heroes who help fight off the hunger that moves at the gates? So you know how to handle these abominations. You can help me out too. The merchant sizes you up with his eyes and clicks his tongue in a friendly manner, clearly liking what he sees. And why would he not? I am Bleming, an upstanding citizen and merchant in this town. Ask anyone, everybody knows me here. I make a living bringing back certain goods from Numeria. Of late, however, I haven't been able to bring back anything. 
The hunger that moves is stalking the mountain pass. And now my caravan can't get through. If you help me, you can be sure I'll see to it that you're well rewarded. Any reason it's going after your caravans? That's a good question, but do I look like an expert on these abominations? On the face of it, there's no reason the hunger that moves should attack wagons. But for all I know, perhaps there's no other prey on the mountain pass, so it attacks whatever living flesh it sniffs out. So what exactly do you do here? I bring back goods from Numeria. I'm a humble trader, but here in Gundren, people like me are worth their weight in gold. We have to get some of our most basic items from Numeria, or we'd be truly miserable. What with Ustalov imposing a blockade on us a hundred years ago. That's where I come in. I bring back hardware tools, fabrics, spices, you name it. I guess that sounds innocent enough. Yeah, I can help. What's up? I can't tell you how glad I am to hear it. Great, it's a deal then. But there isn't a lot to tell, really. Uh, caravans bound for Numeria use the mountain pass. There is no other path. And it's there at the narrowest stretch that the hunger that moves has made its new home. My caravan has been attacked twice. I haven't seen it myself, obviously, but many of my people escaped with their lives, and they all say they'd been attacked by the hunger that moves. Now everyone's flatly refusing to go without a heavy escort. But where am I supposed to find people to do the job? Sigvorn has no manpower to spare on account of that quarantine. You'll find my lad sitting by the fisher folks' houses outside the wall. Tell them I sent you, and they'll explain the rest. Okay. So the quarantine again, hmm. Let's see what you got. The merchant runs his gaze over you and chuckles. Why, a gentleman of such distinction would be much better served by Arcien Cray. My merchandise is what it is. As simple articles for peasants like myself. Okay, I mean, I could still use food and spices and stuff, but sure. May Serena bless you with good fortune. Yeah, you too. You're, uh, you're really bad at your job. Alright, so I guess we're looking for this Arcean... Oh, a reason, Cray. A reason? Who is right over here? A lean, tall man behind the counter turns toward you. Uh, okay, just real quick, he doesn't have a counter, but who's counting? The suit he's wearing doesn't immediately catch the eye, but it is expensive. His thin lips stretch into a friendly smile. Welcome. I'm Arisian Cray. Thanks for coming to my humble shop. Gundren's guests are my guests. Where are you and your companions from? Uh, Dresden. We're from Dresden. The merchant's eyes light up even more. A crusader from Dresden. Imagine that. Very interesting. I usually see Numerian travelers here, and the occasional Ustalov. You really are a special visitor. But anyway, forgive my curiosity. I imagine you have questions? Or would you like to see my merchandise? Yeah, yeah, I, I notice you're important enough to have a portrait, so who are you? What, what's your deal? The merchant twists an expensive ring on his finger, looking lost in thought for a moment. I used to be asked that a lot back when I'd just come here. Your question almost transported me back to those days. What used to be my answer? I'm a foreigner, but you needn't be afraid of me. I'm an Ustalab, but do weigh all the pros and cons of running a pitchfork through me. The merchant's laughter is soft, but very sincere. Those were the days full of fuss and new faces. A pleasant memory. A lot has changed since then. I've settled down here, started my own business, put on a few pounds. Happy to make your acquaintance. My name is Arisen Cray. I'm a rare breed round these parts. A merchant. And an outstanding one, too, I must add. By the way, what would you say if this merchant had some business to discuss with you? Well, that would depend entirely on what kind of business it is. Fair enough. Information first, decisions later. You're a shrewd one. I could see that right away. And that's the reason I'm making this proposal. I suppose you've heard about the trouble at the Wolf Goddess's temple by now? In case you haven't, here it is in a nutshell. 
For a long time now, the temple has been besieged by demons. The goddess's power prevents them from getting in, but they have no intention of leaving either. I've used my connections to find out that the demons are likely coveting a certain knick-knack that's inside the temple. Well, knick-knack is one way of putting it. Some might prefer ancient relic. If you happen to get inside sometime, take a good look around. I can guarantee you a worthwhile reward for any credible information. Trust me, I'm willing to incur major expenses for the sake of seeing this town. Breathe a sigh of relief. Yeah, yeah, I bet it's all out of the goodness of your heart. You'd, you'd hand it right over to them, right? I'll check it out. You've made me the happiest among merchants. Glad to shake your hand and seal the deal. And remember, the reward will be very generous. I'm saying this in case you're not especially concerned about what will become of Gundren. Uh-huh. Hey, uh, tell me, what, what's it like living in Gundren as an Ustalav? The merchant smiles a reserved, knowing smile. If the locals' looks could kill, but they can't, so it's eminently tolerable. Yes, I'm a little unpopular, this is true. You see, being an Ustalav here is an indelible stigma. No matter how many years I've been, and will continue to be, an honest shopkeeper, they'll always say, he's a nice chap, sensible and honest, but still an Ustalav, so don't put your pitchfork away just yet. Do you understand? Yeah, kind of. You have any insight you'd like to share about the whole Ustalav slash Gundren thing? You'd have a pretty unique perspective on it, I think. Ah, it's the troubles of bygone times. When old Sarkaris fell, a handful of survivors sought refuge in Ustalav. But the Ustalavs were afraid of the demonic scourge. Ustalav closed its borders to refugees, and the blockade has continued to this day. Yes, yes, it's an antagonism that goes back decades. Sadness clouds the merchant's gaze. That blockade is a deplorable misunderstanding stemming from a lack of research into the nature of demons at the time. I was profoundly outraged to learn that the borders were still closed. While, of course, it is beyond my power to change that, I did all I could. I came here and I opened my shop so that my merchandise might in some way relieve these people's hardship. Uh-huh. So, uh, tell me, what, what are your thoughts on Gundren? The shopkeeper glances at the dusty window, smiling. A wonderful place. If a bit of an acquired taste. Not quiet, old-fashioned, but you can feel its potential. Gundren can be more than this. It's a shame not everyone who's in charge of its future sees that. What, what wind? Okay, this guy was clearly supposed to be inside of an actual shop. I think it's pretty obvious at this point that Gundren was originally supposed to have a lot more going on. And I guess they just, uh, they trimmed some stuff out and didn't really smooth over all the, uh, resulting edges. So you're, uh, you're talking about Yasena, right? She certainly seems like the sort of woman who would stand in the way of progress, I suppose. Ah, yes, a wonderful woman of firm principles, a true Sarkorian. Although between you and me, the total of her knowledge of the ancestral ways comes from what her grandmother told her of what her own grandmother had told her of what... You get the idea. She goes out of her way to revive old customs. But from where I'm standing, it, it sadly seems to do nothing to help Gundren move with the times. Wouldn't you say forward is the only direction worth moving in? Time only moves forward. Be like time. That's what I always say. Sure, sure, yeah. Forwards, not backwards. Upwards, not forwards. And always twirling, twirling, twirling towards freedom. But uh, I'm guessing that Sigvorn is more your speed, right? Indeed, a most worthy man. Courageous, honest, and a true leader. Another pleasant trait of his is his openness to new things. Much as he strives to remain true to his Sarkorian roots or his idea of them. It's just that he lacks any flexibility in political matters. Do you see what I mean? And Gundren is badly in need of allies. 
Oh, interesting. Okay, so Arisen might actually represent Ustalavan interests. So, theoretically, we might have three separate factions vying for control or influence in Gundren. Hey, uh, I found this weird rock. Anything you might be interested in? Oh, it's nothing remarkable. A common occult item, straight out of old Sarkaris, judging by its exterior. If you wish to sell it, I can offer you 1500 Sorry for not being able to go any higher. It's not what you'd call fast-moving goods. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll uh, hold on to it, thanks. I understand. A most versatile item. Perhaps one day you'll want to crack a few nuts, so you'll fish in your pocket, and that will be its finest hour. Uh-huh. Sure, that... That's why you're offering me 1,500 gold for it, for a plain rock that's only good for smashing things. So tell me, Arisen, what do you make of this wolf goddess, Serena? A most interesting entity. In terms of power, she doesn't exactly rank with the likes of Iomade, of course, but she is powerful enough. It's sad to see people's faith in Sarkorian gods wane by the day. A pity, but time passes and some things pass with it. What was before will never be again, nor will old Sarkaris ever rise from its ashes. Yeah, my opinion of Arisen here has plummeted very quickly over these past couple of questions. He's clearly a, an opportunistic scoundrel with his own... his own agenda. Which I think does track, right? Ustalav and Numeria are rivals, aren't they? So yeah, yeah, he and Sigborn could very well represent two completely different factions vying for control. All right, let's, uh, let's see what you've got. Of course, I have excellent articles, and at good prices, too. I'll be the judge of that. I already see Swarmbane clasps, though, so we are definitely buying some things. Let's see. Quiver of Roses Thorns. Uh, unholy Speed Ammo, plus 2d8 Unholy Damage... And Curse of Weakness. Oh, plus regenerates each day. Nice. That's not bad, but it is very expensive. Also, we uh, we didn't bring a Roo. Arrow Guard, extra plus three verse ranged. Barding of Tenacity. Plus three heavy barding, immunity to poison, and trip. Very basic, but potentially useful. Locust Shepherd Staff, plus two, the R5 versus Swarms, deals an extra 3d8 bludgeoning damage to Swarms, ignoring immunities and DR, and remove Sickness three times per day as a swift action. Wow. I mean, given the nature of this quest, that's not bad. Scorching Bracers. Scorching Ray three times per day as a 12th level caster. Also increases save DC of evocation spells by two. Well, that is a must-have for Ember, but it really depends on what she's already got in her Bracer slot. Oh, yeah, we can definitely swap those out. Those were basically placeholders anyway. We will absolutely take those. What else have we got? Ustalvik, Ustalovic Pride. Plus three full plate. Plus three charisma. Plus four bonus to CMD. VR5 versus Undead. Wow, that might be a good buy for So So. Does Regil use charisma for anything? I don't think he does. Yeah, I think he's better off with the plus four Mithril Plate for mobility. Midnight Hunter's Ring. Uh, plus two Enhancement to Dexterity. Attacks versus Lycanthropes gain a plus two Enhancement. Once per day, spend a swift action to apply the effects of a haste spell to themselves for five rounds. Well, that is interesting. We're seeing a lot of 
non-belt stat boosting items now. And a couple of items that are keyed towards fighting lycanthropes. That's a little telling. So aside from swarms, this adventure must involve lichens at some point. Interesting, interesting. All right, the rest of this seems pretty conventional. Nothing all that notable, I think, but... Um... Oh, let's, uh, let's make sure we grab those Swarmbane clasps. We want both of those. Yeah, those are super cheap anyway. And I guess that's it. Still some uh, very interesting stuff. I might come back for that Quiver of Rose's Thorn. That would be, uh, theoretically, that would be a good buy for Aru. It's just a lower priority right now because she's not actually with us. We'll take all that diamond dust, too. That's a finite resource. A shame he's not offering any crafting ingredients. We are actually running low on a few things. But not a huge deal. Ah, I'd really rather not break that set if we don't have to. So I guess these will go to... Waljif and Darren. Oh, and let's get those new bracers on Ember. Look at that, it actually matches most of her outfit. All right, well, uh, Arisen, it's been interesting. I'll probably have to kill you later. Because based on our conversation here, I'm guessing you are somehow involved in the current troubles plaguing Gundren. Just a gut feeling for now, but putting pressure on Gundren would, would lend itself towards forcing a one-sided alliance with Ustalov. You know what? That might actually explain why the other merchant was having his caravans attacked. Maybe that is specifically to cut Gundren off from those supplies, or just to choke out his competition. We'll, uh, we'll have to look into that, see if there's some potential skullduggery there. Because that guy actually couldn't even confirm it was the hunger that walks that was terrorizing his caravans. He said that's what he was told, but he couldn't actually confirm it. Alright, so we've got Sigborn in here, I assume. Yeah, yeah, but... We're pretty late in the episode at this point. I don't really want to get bogged down in another extended conversation just yet. Let's, uh, let's poke around outside the gate. The secondary gate we just passed. See if there's anything interesting out there. Ideally, I'd like to either get into a fight or set us up for a new fight. For next time. Well, there's people living out here, so that doesn't really imply we're in dangerous territory. So, you've been protected to hire us, is that right? Good, good. Well, set off now. Lads, ready the card. Oh, you're good. You look mighty intimidating. I can tell you're a dangerous one. As soon as you're ready, let me know and we'll be on our way. 
Oh, uh, okay. Well, um, I will catch up with you momentarily, I guess. Oh, that's peculiar. Answering your questions isn't one of my duties. Try asking my boss if you want to know. Um, okay. Which I'm guessing is Sigborn? Right, because she did mention he was using Numerian technology, which could be these. Hey, Serena, what's up? You again? You should have died earlier. I can't promise you a painless death now. Oh, my. Well, that is unfortunate. Um... My followers will take care of you. They're real bloodthirsty beasts. Quoth Muhazal, the Swarm Carrier. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, the cutscenes here are a little wonky. This plus the uh, the thing with the bridge, where Sigborn was clearly supposed to be walking by. But uh, but again, we are getting the gist of it. And to be fair, I might still be getting some jank from uh, from when I had the press build installed. I might need to do a a clean re reinstall. We've still got a few minutes left, though. Let's see if we can save the doggo. Nice hit. Cover me, all right. Oh, crap. Wait. Oh, crap. Okay, hold on. Oh my goodness, these things have an incredibly powerful confusion aura. We cannot get even remotely close to these things. This is a problem. Though, on the bright side, they're spewing acid at us, and we are pretty much acid-proof. Which isn't going to matter if we just end up tearing each other apart. We are in trouble. You know what? I don't I don't really see this working out for us. So um I'm going to go ahead and call it here and uh maybe find a better approach for this one because this feels like a pretty drastic difficulty spike. Again, um maybe this is some press build jank. Maybe the balance is off or something. Maybe it's been fixed in the post launch release. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll check into that. Oh, yeah. 49 AC. Come on. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, yeah, we're going to call it here. We'll hit the pause button for now. I'm going to look into this situation and at the very least make sure we're better, better prepared going into this fight. And we will pick up here. Uh, we will pick up here next time. See you then.
Oh, and special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory B23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleaf, James Tremier, Kazorm, Mark Tiemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Farum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Val and Rook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you'd also like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the Nexus GG, or the YouTube memberships. Links are in the description.